Hey, Kevin Noah here from Fight Designer LLC. It has been a while. It will always be a while. Life is busy. Um, so can't promise that I'll have more regular updates coming forward, but I do have a break coming up. Uh, last day of classes for me uh, for the semester is tomorrow. So hopefully after that and I finish my grading, I'll have enough time to, to maybe do some more check-ins on things that I'd wanted to talk about, both on this channel and on YouTube, where I kept thinking, like, oh, I really ought to do something about the whole rust accident and talking about some of that stuff and I had a backlog of other things and I just haven't had time because that's life sometimes. All right, so today what I want to do is I'm just going to do actually a quick product review because I hadn't done one of those in a while and I got some new toys I wanted to talk about um, and one of them might be a little timely. <laughs> um, but uh, this is a new cup filter rapier and I wanted to talk about this because uh, pretty soon I want to modify it. Um, this was sort of a bare bones one that I ordered through Etsy from a seller called Steel Mastery. Uh, that pr primarily caters to the HEMA market, the historical European martial arts community for fencers. Um, we're doing historic fencing and not a small sword or rapier or things like that. Um, but there's there's also, uh, once we started getting into ODF Schlager blades, because most of their stuff was the, the, uh, the Musketeer or Heavy Epe blades, um, and then they started referring me to other pictures that were actually on this other website. Er, which side? Do it that way. Oh, I forgot I have my thing following me. Um, so there was some confusion over like, wait, which, which, web, which company am I ordering from now? Um, and indeed, this is not, uh, if you look at the, the logos on here, it's not Steel Mastery. Uh, it is HF Armory on both the blade and on the hilt. I'm not sure if there's different corporate entities there or, or if there's uh, tax reasons or whatever going on there. But um, but they're actually based in the Ukraine, which, as we speak, if you've been paying attention to the news, has a whole bunch of uh, Russian military massing on the border. So hopefully they'll all be safe and they'll be able to keep providing us stuff <laughs> in the near future. First off, I got to say, for the, for the price, this is pretty awesome. Um, I mean, I, I have a wholesale account with Cass Hanway, but they have been out of stock with their uh, practical cup belt for a while. So I was looking for something that would be similar in a similar vein and maybe even a little less instantly recognizable to sword geeks as like, oh, I know what that one is. Um, and so this was, was uh, what I was finding. Um, the finish is a little less shiny, a little more munitions grade than the uh, Cass Hanway practical cup hilt, but I'm okay with that. And one of the things I want to do is try polishing some of this up or maybe engraving it or gluing it. I don't know. I wanted to play with it. And a plain wooden handle is just fine because I've, I've done a lot of props modifications and I'm happy maybe putting some ray skin or something on this. Uh, I could do a wire wrap. I'm happy to dress it up. Um, I don't mind little projects like that. That's fine. Um, first impressions. Gotta say, uh, packaging was weird. Here's a picture of the uh, how it was packaged. It was essentially stuffed into two... Uh, short cardboard tubes that didn't even cover the whole blade, and then wrapped up in shrink wrap. And yes, there were some areas where it was poking through a little bit. Um, but despite my concerns when I first got the package, uh, it actually looks fine. I don't see any rust. Um, there, there was nothing that got bent or mangled. Uh, it didn't take too, too long to get here. A um, little bit longer than expected, but with all the, the delays in the ports and stuff, that's, that's not surprising at all right now in this time of year in the holiday season. Um, and it looks pretty good. I gotta say the, uh, the, this is basically a Schlager blade, maybe slightly different, but it's a much higher level of polish than I'm used to from, uh, some of the more standard American vendors like Rogue Steel. Uh, you know, I, I don't think they make their own Schlagers. I think they order them. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember. I'd have to check with Neil on that. But, uh, you know, this, this does have a higher polish, which I like. As a stage blade, it's always nice when you can get something that has a nice nice shine to it. And yeah, there are, you know, when you get up close, there are finishing issues and there's, there's some scratches, especially up here, like near the, near the base. I don't know if you can see, I might have to find a, a do a little insert shot of those, but there are some scratches on the blade. Um, but not a big deal. And again, from any kind of stage distance, you're not going to see that stuff. This is a, a longer blade than I would usually use for stage. Um, but it has the, the fencing button on the tip anyway. So I'm, of course, going to have to cut that down a little bit, round it off, grind it off for stage use. Um, I'm fine doing that. Again, I don't mind little simple projects like that. Um, Flex is just fine. Again, this is a, a blade uh, designed by them for, for fencing. So it's got a great temper, right? This is the kind of thing where you want to, you know, they, they, they were intending that people would stick those rubber archery blunts on the end of this. 
and stab their friends with them <laughs> and not hopefully hurt them, uh, you know, if you're wearing proper fencing attire. So yes, it does have the button. You do have to grind it off. But I think once I, once I uh, cut this down, I think this will be a great stage blade. Rings like a bell. It is a bell hilt. That makes sense. Yeah, so that, oops. Knocked over my old Lewis Shaw broadsword that I was using. <laughs> so uh, sounds great, looks solid. Um, again, this is designed for sport fencing. So I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be tinkering with this a little bit in terms of adaptations to turn this from a, a Hema fencing blade into a stage blade. I'm gonna dress this up. That's nice work, you know. It's glued in half, so it was, it was made in half, but uh, solidly put together. But you know, uh, a wire, leather, cord wrap will make it even more solid. Um, I'm gonna flip this around at the very least, so there's no uh, obvious logo showing. Um, but I could also just replace this with a piece of leather or something if I decide to go with a, a particular color theme. Uh, maybe something that will match the grip. Um, there's a production of Three Musketeers coming up at Cleveland Playhouse. They were, they were asking about cup hilts. And I realized it was an area where I was a little short in my rapier inventory. So that's, that's what spurred this purchase. Uh, so I think once we get it into its finished form, you'll probably see it showing up uh, on the stage at Playhouse Square in Cleveland. Um, and I might actually check with some of them and see uh, which character they wanted this for and if they have a color scheme for that character. Because uh, I, I love it when I can actually make things work specifically for a production. It's just satisfying. Uh, and since I'm customizing it anyway, it's easy enough to do that. One of my favorite things for sword hilts is uh, ray skin. And for, for decades, I've been using these ray skin wallets, and the, the ray skin never wears out. This is super tough stuff. It's got a great texture. It was historically used on sword hilts from, uh, you know, Shiavonos of Italy to the katana of Japan. Um, when these break, it's all of this stuff in here that breaks. And so when my wallets die, I just rip them apart and I turn them into sword handles. So I still have some of those kicking around. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. Um, I ordered some... Uh, some green ray skin for the, uh, a project I want to do, another one. I got some aluminum blade blanks from, uh, from Rogue Steel to do uh, sort of a, a Celtic leaf blade, Greek leaf blade sort of sword for, uh, well, I was thinking of the Percy Jackson musical coming out, uh, and there might be some rentals for that. Um, so I'm hoping to put together a couple of uh, uh, leaf blade aluminum short swords. Uh, and I got some green ray skin thinking that would fit the, the son of Poseidon uh, for those, but um, it's not cheap. I and mean, frankly, it's like 10 bucks more to, to buy a wallet than it is to buy just the, the ray skin. And since I wear these out periodically anyway, I'll probably just replace another wallet at some point. Uh, but you can get it in a variety of colors as well. So anyway, uh, Steel Mastery, HF Armory, uh, I'll drop some links. Uh, I think the Ukraine could maybe use some support right now. Um, and I hope that they stay safe. Uh, and that they can continue to produce good products like this. Because I think for the, for the price point, this is pretty darn impressive. i got to say, I love what uh, the popularity of HEMA has done to the availability of quality sword options for those of us in stage combat. Gotta love it. All right, and since I haven't taken time to edit that video yet, because I've been dealing with grading and things like that, um, but I still sometimes need breaks to tinker with things, because that's my happy place. Uh, I have an update. Here is the rapier now. So what I've done here is a, a ray skin grip with a little twisted wire uh, on the hilt there as well. A little epoxy still drying on there. I'll clean it off the pommel later. Um, and I just did a little bit of uh, gun blue on the furniture and then a quick once over on the corners with some sandpaper to help the, the line stand out a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of like it. I kind of dig it. It's a nice, uh, nice dark finish. Maybe this would be good for a, a, a Tybalt or such character sometime. Perhaps... Uh, you know, a good uh, villain's rapier, and in Elizabethan England, nothing says villain like using a Spanish-style sword. So, uh, that is the just the quick update on, uh, I think, for now at least, unless anybody wants it customized for a certain gig, I'll call this good to go. Happy holidays. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and as usual, uh, you know, I don't know when I'll put the next one up, but if there's stuff that you're really interested in, in terms of prop weapons or theater, or I'll be doing some more mocap stuff later, I've got more I've been doing with the mocap project, uh, any of that kind of stuff. I always love to hear it. Drop it in the comments, shoot me an email, whatever. Till next time, thanks.